This tutorial will demonstrate how to bake lighting in Houdini and Redshift to make light maps. I'll briefly go over what a light map is with a simple scene to get the idea across. Then I'll demonstrate the process of baking the light map in Houdini and the process of how it's rendered into a texture file in Redshift. Last, I'll show you how to use the bake light map for rendering. There were some other topics I wanted to cover like the advantages and disadvantages of using a light map, but the video seemed too long for that, so I'll save that discussion for a later video. In this simple example, I'll go over how a light map works and how the light data is stored into a texture file. Here we see a very simple scene with a cube and two area lights, yellow and blue, directed toward the cube on opposite ends. On the bottom left, we see the UVs for the cube, and on the bottom right is the baked light map for the cube. The light map is just light data saved into a texture file using the UVs of the cube as mapping coordinates. So in this example, you can see the blue light baked into two sides of the cube and the yellow light baked into the other two sides of the cube. This is a very simple version of a light map in order to illustrate what it does. So this is the scene I have set up. This is the geometry that I'm going to be baking the light map for. These are the lights and cameras I have. So this scene only has two lights, a dome light, and I believe this is an area light. Yes. These are the additional uh, items, objects that are scattered on top of the terrain. For example, the grass and the rocks. So I'm going to do, this is a render of what the scene looks like, uh, fully rendered without light maps, just plain. In order to render the light maps, I'm going to have to like turn off all these uh, additional items because I'm only rendering the light map for this particular geometry. So I'm going to turn off the background as well. The lights need to be on so we can bake the lighting information into the map. In order to create light maps, we need good UVs. So I'm going to briefly describe uh, the process in how I create the UVs for this particular uh, geometry. And I'm gonna Uh, in order to make light maps, you need unique UVs. You cannot have overlapping UVs. So this geometry has a base and these side primitives, which I don't need because I'm not going to be rendering the bottom. For simplicity sake, I just deleted them to make unwrapping a little quicker and easier. After I deleted the bottom and side primitives, I threw on a UV flattening node. So this is what the UVs look like. Throw in a quick shade. I'm going to try and recreate uh, overlapping UVs to, sh to show you what it would look like. So I put the base back in. The, the side primitives are still here. Let's throw okay. The side primitives are still here and the base is still here. And I threw in a UV project. So this is going to produce uh, overlapping UVs. This is, you're going to see this picture here and on the bottom. So the UV coordinates are not uniquely mapped to the geometry. They're shared, essentially, used on the top and the bottom. So you want to try to avoid this. So after you have your UVs all set up, make sure your lights are on. This is the material I have set up for th this object. So let's just go into it, just quickly see what it looks like. 
So there are is one, two, three, four, five, six, six sets of texture sets that were layered to create this particular material for the terrain. Now I'm gonna do a quick uh, render. Now these items are turned, the render flag is turned off for these items. So I'm just gonna do a quick render to preview what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like with just this material, which is this material. This is what it looks like with this material. Now we're gonna set up the render node to bake out the lighting of for this material onto this geometry. You go to the out, throw on your redshift nodes, which is this guy. You'll, this will pop down. Since I already have one, I don't need that. Go to the ROP. Render maps. Check this. You might want to turn this up a bit. The higher the resolution, the better for the light map. I'm gonna go with 2K. Anything higher, my computer starts crashing. Now Redshift uses AOVs to bake light into the, uh, to create the light maps. And according to the Redshift documentation, they suggest that you use the total diffuse lighting raw. For the global illumination, I have it set to brute force. And for the IPR, I have it turned off. For the progressive rendering, I have it turned off. So I'm gonna... So try. Oh, I forgot one thing. In the render map, you also want, might want to specify what object you're baking the light for. So I'm going to be baking the light for the cliff geometry, which has UVs. So on the right is the UVs. On the left is the baking light map. You'll see that it should look very similar. All the lighting, all it does, it bakes all the lighting information onto this uh, texture map, sort of. Essentially, that's what it is. As you can see, the light map on the left looks very similar to the UVs on the right. So that's why it's very important to have clean UVs. So after you have your light map baked, you can save it. Now it's important to use EXR as an extension because EXR can support multiple layers, which is what we baked the light map on. We baked it onto, if you remember, we we used AOVs to bake the light map and we chose the total diffused lighting raw information to, this is the name of the layer that it gets baked into. So EXR can support multiple layers So this is the light map that we baked. I'm gonna show you. This is the total diffuse raw layer that. So this is your lighting information. Just the lighting information. This actually contains all the diffuse lighting, everything, all the lighting, the color, the lighting, everything. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using this layer, all everything, and 
render uh, the scene with this instead of just using the light which you'll see it's, it'll it'll be a lot faster however it it, it is a little it, it, not as flexible because if you wanted to change the color afterwards you would have to rebate the uh, the light map if you're using this particular layer if you just use this layer it's more flexible because you can dynamically change the texture the color so since we're done with the light map I'm gonna turn this off I'm gonna remove this AOV since I'm not gonna need it anymore I have my light map Oh, the redshift. The global illumination, you'll need to set it to something. And this number needs to be greater than zero. I set it to brute force. You can experiment with the different types. Let's go back here. Now for this. We're going to need a different material in order to use the light map. We can't use this one anymore. Now, I already have one set up, so I'm just going to choose this. In order to use the light map, so let's go into it. You need either to use an uh, incandescent material, which is uh, a material that glows. And for the color feed in the light map texture. So this is the light map texture that we baked. Feed it into the color plug of the incandescent material. And that's all you have to do. Because I baked the entire color. I'm using the entire color, uh, diffuse color, everything, light information, not just the light, diffuse color and everything. So I'm going to turn off the lights. I'm going to do a quick bake. Now see how fast that is. Two seconds. The terrain is all there. Now let me put all the additional items back in. Just to compare how fast it is. You see all those black? It's because I turned off all the lights. There's no lights in the scene. But the light map uh, is assigned to the material for this, for the terrain. So you, there's light emitting from the actual geometry. Now, how can we use the light map with other geometry like we have more geom more than one geometry on the scene if you go to your lights go to the object tab check the enable light mesh what this will do is enable the light only for the objects that you specify which is what we want so we want the light to affect everything in the scene, but the terrain. So these are all my scattered items. This is the terrain, so I'm not going to select that. So that's the dome light. This is the area light. Now let's render this one more time. Oh, I forgot to turn on the light. Since I didn't bake the lighting for these scattered items, the lighting for the scattered items are being rendered dynamically like in real time the lighting for the this geometry is 
using the light map, is rendered using the static light map. That's all I wanted to show you for this video. I wanted to thank everyone for watching and sticking till the end of the video because I realized it got a lot longer than I thought it would be. I had to fast forward a lot of shots in the video, like the actual rendering parts, because no one wants to watch pixels rendering on a screen. The only rendering shot I didn't fast forward is the part where the scattered items are rendered along with the terrain with the light map, which is the very last part of the video that I just did. I wanted to illustrate how fast the render performs for the cliff geometry and how the rendering slows down for the scattered items because they don't contain any light maps. I realize I should have demonstrated a way to use the total diffuse lighting raw layer of the light map, which is just the lighting instead of using the color layer of the light map, which is all the lighting, like everything of the light. But the video got too long, so maybe I'll do that in another video. Just a quick tip so that I don't leave everyone hang, if you did want to use the total diffuse lighting raw layer, then you need to load that layer into the material and then multiply it with the diffuse color that you want the object to be or multiply it with the texture maps that you have for the object. So what this does is combines the light map with your original texture or color that you had set up for the object so the computer won't need to recalculate all the lighting for every frame and instead only load the diffuse color that you had already set up and load the pre-calculated lighting data in the light map. This requires a, a bit more setup in the material compared to the simplistic incandescent material that I used in this video. So I may do a more detailed video in the future explaining how to use the total diffused lighting raw, which is probably the more appropriate way of using light maps. So thank you again for sticking to the end and I really apologize for the long video.